marked with chalk and cut with an axe. That's why they call it a firewall. Crib it up with some dunnage. What we're doing now is we're going to clean up all these brackets because I'm going to move the cab back. I'm cutting these off. These are the old running board mounts here. I'm going to cut this cross member out because it's going to interfere with my transmission. And then we're going to take the 316th plate and box the inside of that frame. Then we can set the motor back in and build the motor mounts. But until we get this frame cleaned up, we can't really do anything. So.
back in the shop this morning working on the mini semi truck. It's cold as hell outside, wind's blowing. I think it's gonna snow. Anyway, we're uh, well on our way to getting the engine mounted. We need to finish up the transmission mount and uh, get that auxiliary transmission back there mounted right there. So, yeah, it's looking good. Boxing this frame in completely, so I have to make these little brackets to hold the nuts for the cross member. Tighten them all together, and then we'll slide that inside the frame, and then I'll weld this side, and it'll stay there indefinitely because you can't get in here to put a wrench on it. And I don't want the bolts going through the frame, I think that's ugly. So we're gonna hide this little mechanism that we've made here inside the frame. So what I've done here is I've picked up another frame from a 34 Dodge. Yep, getting the rails for the 34 Dodge. These are going to be used to extend the, uh, actually my Dodge is a 33, these are 34 rails. And this is going to be used to extend my frame on the Mini Semi. discovered is the 33 Dodge the frame rail thickness is 3 16 on the 34 I got lucky it's actually quarter inch thick so I'll only box up to the rear section of frame but I wanted the wheelbase long I'm gonna have to step the frame to compensate for the rear axle there's gonna be two rear axles in this thing so it'll be a 10 wheel truck just like a semi truck and because this frame tapers right here, has this sexy little curve to it, I'm gonna take advantage of that curve. I'm gonna turn this frame rail upside down and set it on top of this rear section of frame. And then I can taper that frame to match this taper so it just looks nice and swept and clean. But uh, got really lucky on this uh, set of frame rails because they're a lot thicker. So I'll get these set up here and kind of do some mock-up and then we'll start marrying this all together.
Well, we're getting back on the truck this morning. I uh, worked on this frame pretty much all weekend. And uh, we got the 34 rear section sitting on top of the 33 front section. And as you can see right here, there's a lot of stuff going on. All I did was I stacked the frames on top of each other, but I cut two inches out of this 34 frame so that I could set it down on. And then I cut and tapered the bottom here so it would just look like it just swept up. What we'll do eventually is we'll bondo all that in and we'll actually smooth the frame. Because well, we're gonna paint this frame. If you look at this paint right here, a couple of places we've discovered the original paint. And uh, we're gonna go with that original red color. We'll paint all the suspension and uh, Speaking of suspension, we're actually moving on to the rear. And the rear is where this thing's gonna get kind of crazy. So, I've got a Dana 70 from an 88 Dodge truck. And it has 308 gears in it. These are actually called a Dana 71. A lot of people mislabel them. You cannot change the gear ratio in these because the pinion is so large in diameter. What I'm gonna do is I've got another one of these axles and I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to make a pinion come out of the back of this front one and drive the rear one. I'm going to have a coupler drive shaft where I can disconnect it. But more importantly, the way I'm going to do the suspension is kind of like a big truck, but I'm going to miniature it down. So it's going to be on airbags so that it'll carry load because we're going to pull a trailer with this. But uh, I'm actually building these link brackets so that both differentials will pivot off the same link. They will, uh, they're not like a, a teetery wishbone. They'll be independent of each other, but they're both gonna be mounted to the same pillar. Rather than have a bracket up here and a four link setup, and then another bracket here and a four link setup, I'm doing a reverse four link setup on the forward axle, and then a traditional four link setup on the rear axle. So that's what we're working on today, and uh, we'll bring some more uh, pieces into the video as we uh, get progress on getting them in.